European Union has given its stamp of approval for the restructuring plans for four Spanish banks. This will clear the way for 37 billion euros of funding from the European Stability Mechanism. Well, David Roman is in Madrid. David, is, does this mean that the, the rescue of Spanish banks is finally underway? Uh, yeah, well, this, uh, this stamp of approval means that uh, Spanish banks finally will get the funding that they requested over the summer. Uh, uh, in principle, there was this plan that some of this funding could come as an emergency help for uh, Spain um, in the last couple of months. It didn't happen. And it, it, the funding will be starting next month and uh, will come mostly in the first half of 2013. But that's an awful lot of money, I mean, 37 billion euros for just basically four banks. I know, you know, Bankia is one of the biggest, and we'll talk about that later, but it's still a lot of money. It is a whole lot of money. Most of these banks are very small. Most of them are uh, savings banks that merge with other savings banks in the process of uh, becoming commercial banks. And uh, what they did was most of them, they just gave of property loans uh, to developers and these developers when the Spain's property uh, sector crashed uh, five years ago they just you know ran out of money to pay back the loans so, so what, are the, what, the are banks, what are these banks promising to, to you know to justify these loans uh, well what the banks uh, at, at the moment during the property uh, boom the banks were making a lot of money out of these loans so at the moment it looked like a very very smart idea to just be so exposed to the construction sector because pretty much everyone thought it would always go on for um, in all, you know, the Spanish banks have asked, or Spain, I should say, asked DSM for a total of 100 billion euros. Um, so that means there's still a big chunk left. Um, you know, will this be enough to save the rest of the banking system, essentially? Well, the, uh, apart from these four banks, most of the, uh, the rest of the Spanish banks are sort of healthy. Uh, some of them will request some uh, help, probably, uh, minor amounts of money. And uh, the rest, what well, they've done, they've been... Uh, Taking up uh, provisions to cover the loans that they had, so they've been uh, they've been undergoing a pretty uh, you know pretty slow and painful process of uh, getting themselves healthy. So let's, the calculation is that not all of that money will be needed. David, let's look at Bankia alone. Um, I mean, exactly uh, how bad is it, and what sort of steps is it going to have to take? Because that's the one that's going to affect people and the economy the most, I should imagine. Yeah, bank is the worst case by far. It's uh, it, it was a Spain's fourth biggest bank when it went bust. This was like six months ago, and uh, this bank was awfully exposed to property development along the Valencia coast, the Mediterranean, and where you have lots of developments for you know foreign and Spanish tourists. Uh, the prices over there just crashed down over the last few years, and you know this the the parts of Bankia that were lending there they were left tremendously exposed. So bank is going to take up like uh, two thirds of all of the funding, and it's definitely the biggest problem. There. I mean, David, there's also been some fallout elsewhere. I mean, I gather that some of the bondholders um, of of, you know, of these bank bonds um, actually have to take a hit as a result of the restructuring. Yeah, that's one of the conditions uh, set by the European Union to approve this help for Spanish banks is that there is some sort of a private sector involvement, and this is. This is falling down on junior uh, debt holders, the people who had uh, what they call preferred shares, uh, paying uh, pretty big interest rates on uh, on the capital invested. And most of them are, are retail investors, and most of them are actually customers of Bankia, who are taking uh, pretty big, pretty significant losses on on their investments. I mean, so are, these, are, these, are, are, are those essentially Spanish citizens themselves? Yes, it's mostly Spanish citizens, and some of them are foreigners, but mostly it's Spanish citizens. But I guess they were, in a sense, were quite happy to take this hit because it's better rather than watching the banks go under entirely and, you know, basically losing their holdings altogether. Well, that's that's right, uh, but uh, they're still not happy. Many of them are half organized and they're filing lawsuits and they're protesting this. And uh, the fact that they're taking up uh, this, this haircut is going to be a complication for Bankia to... Uh, uh, push forward with its uh, its new uh, development program for the last, next four years. You're going to be battling, you know, people who complain about this for uh, quite a while. But I should imagine, anyway, David, um, finally, that this really does suggest here that you know the problems of the banks in Spain are finally being resolved. Yes, yes. The impression over here is that the sector, after you know, a pretty slow processing which first they denied there was a problem and then they addressed the problem very, very slowly. It's finally getting killed. Uh, so uh, it is it is fair to expect that say over the next year, most of the issues will be resolved and the sector should be somewhat healthy, say by 2014. David, thank you very much indeed.